Hello developers, how are you doing? Welcome back to your channel TapaScript where you learn things conceptually. Today we are here with, with another fundamental conceptual video on JavaScript asynchronous programming and promises. JavaScript asynchronous programming is a foundational concept for you to work with JavaScript and any other libraries and framework on top of it. Not only that, if you want to appear in any of the interviews which is related to JavaScript and the web programming, I bet that there will be questions from asynchronous programming and promises. Mastering this concept is very very essential for you and this video is going to give you another push to get there. If you are new to asynchronous programming, I already have a video that you can check it out. That video will give you overall idea about what exactly synchronous means, asynchronous means and why JavaScript is synchronous or is JavaScript asynchronous. You can understand all this concept with lot of graphics and the visual effect. You should not miss that video. You can find the link of that video in the description of it. In general, asynchronous means something that is not occurring at the same time. For example, let's take a data fetching example. Like you have the client and you have a server and you are making a call to fetch certain data from the server. You make the request but you don't know really when the response will come back it depends on many things it depends on your network speed how much processing time is taking at the back end how much time it takes for the response to come back in all this factor if it has to be a synchronous operation what will happen the subsequent call has to wait a lot for the previous call to complete so why the data fetching like this is has to be asynchronous in a way that you make the call and then you start executing your other aspects as it is Whenever there is a response come back asynchronously, not at the same point of time, you can still handle this response. We take care of these things using something called JavaScript promise object. How about today's video then? Today's video, we are going to talk about promise API. Another very, very useful concept that developers must understand. And this is where even after knowing how promises works, even after knowing how asynchronous programming works, there are a lot of common mistakes that people make. This video will emphasize on promise APIs. And I'm also going to introduce a very cool tool that I have developed so that you can practice lot of stuff about JavaScript promises and you can be master of it. You can actually practice lot of conceptual part using that particular tool. So without any further delay, let us get started. What is promise APIs by the way? So in JavaScript, promise is a special object helps us to deal with asynchronous programming. We know what asynchronous programming is by now. We know what promises it at a very high level. Now what we will know like about some of the special methods that will help us to deal with promises much much more elegantly. Without these methods, Dealing with promises in a real life world, in a real life example, real life project is pretty, pretty dif difficult. These methods are all, all settled, any, rest, resolve and reject. All these methods we are going to learn in depth with their use cases. And along with that, I'm going to introduce you to a very special tool that I have developed so that you can practice all these methods with different combinations such a way that you will be able to answer any questions that anybody asks about promises and all its methods. So let's get started with the first method where we'll be learning about promise.all. In JavaScript, promises are the special object helps you to deal with asynchronous programming. How to create a promise? Let us quickly start creating a promise. To create a promise, you will be using a promise constructor just like this new promise. And this promise constructor takes a function. We call it as executor function. So I'll be passing a function. And this function takes two parameters which are provided to you by JavaScript. One is called resolve and another is called reject. Both of them are nothing but the function. What do you do with the resolve and reject? So with promises, what are the asynchronous call or the asynchronous asynchronous nature that you make after the success of that asynchronous thing you call the resolve method after the wave if that turns out to be an error you call the reject method as simple as that so from this promise i can straight away call something called resolve let's call let's return something called red so i'm saying that i'm resolving this promise with the value called red a string value called red it can be anything it can be an add a object or whatever you want now how to handle this promise first i'll be taking this promise in a variable let's say call const red and now red is a promise basically that is what we have instantiated i'll be doing like red dot then so again then is a handler method that javascript gives us to handle promises here i can actually catch the value that promise returns when it is successfully fulfilled it means that it is resolved and then that value i can take and i can do anything with that so for now i will be probably doing console.log value so if i save this i am seeing this red is getting printed immediately you know i have created a promise and then i have resolved it now a little bit tweak i am just removing this one instead of resolving this immediately let me resolve it with a delay so that it looks like that we are performing something asynchronous so for that i'll be using set 
time out so what it is doing is basically you know set time out you pass a function and then you actually do whatever you want to do and then you actually give a delay after that delay that particular function will get executed so in our case what we are saying is like after this amount of delay then you resolve this particular promise so if i save it now there will be a slight delay and after that delay that red has come the red didn't come immediately so if i just refresh it you will see it like after a delay yes after a one second delay the red has come if i increase this timing the delay will be that much now it is actually mimicking something like an asynchronousness or as asynchronousness even though this is just to show you like how promises work now let's imagine that like this we have multiple such promises so what i'm going to do now i am going to copy this red and i'll change them to let's say green i'll make it as green and then i'll tell it as blue you know three different colors i'll tell it as blue now i have three promises and not only that what i'm going to do now i am also going to change their timing so for example the first one takes one you know second to kind of execute the next one let us make like three seconds the last one let us make five seconds so right now we have three promises and each of these promises gets resolved after a different period of time. So proper asynchronous programming stage that we have. Now the point is if this is happening in your code, there are multiple promises and you have to handle all these promises by handling means you have to know what each of these promises resolve with you have to take that resolve value and you have to do something with the resolve value how are you going to handle that so this is where promise apis come into picture and the first one promise.all is what we are going to use but before i do that i will tell a common mistake that people make they actually take this red green and blue in an array like this red green and blue and after taking this in an array they want to iterate with this they want to use for loop or you know for off loop or for each loop and after iterating they take out each of this red green and blue and then try to call a dot then method to resolve it the way that we have seen you know sometime back doing this for loop for handling multiple promises is definitely not a great idea because promises takes its own time right now we have hard coded the time with one second three seconds five seconds but when you're making a network call you really don't know when a particular response will be back so running a for loop will never guarantee you the execution of it the way that you are actually looking for now to mitigate all these mistakes and all this error that is where the javascript promise apis provide you this method so the first method that we are going to call, talk about is called promise.org promise.all method executes multiple promises in parallel this is a very very important word it executes multiple promises in parallel not in sequence and returns you a new promise this is a question that i get always on my dm like I have called promise.all but it is not returning me the expected result because people think that promise.all the moment I call the all method is going to return the result. The all method doesn't return the result. It returns you a promise that again you have to resolve. We are going to talk about that. It waits for execution of all the input promises to complete. Okay, right now we have red, green and blue. So if I do promise.all on red, green and blue. It is going to wait for the execution of all the promises to complete. So the execution time, the total execution type of promise.all method depends on the maximum time taken by a promise. Very important point. So for example, if I have promise.all and it is taking this array of all the promises, the promise.all method is going to return a promise. It's not going to return the result value from each of the promise. First point. Second point, it will wait for the execution of all these promises. So the time that promise.all will take to execute everything, it depends on the max time taken by a resolve prompt. Now for this promise, the max time is, the time is one second, three second, five second. So which promise is taking the, supposed to take the maximum time for resolving is the blue one, correct? So until, unless the blue one gets resolved, the five seconds, the promise.all is going to take a maximum of five seconds to resolve if all the promises gets resolved now i told that promise.all method returns a promise so it means you have to handle this promise again now to handle this promise what we have to do we have to two ways we can do one is like const all promises i take it in a variable i will be using traditional then method give me the value to deal with so i will be creating the value over here and then i can do like console dot log of value what do you think is going to happen right so if i do this so it will take one second for this three seconds for this and then you know total five seconds so after total five seconds you saw that it's actually printed red green and blue now if i don't do this all promises dot then so if i just this is a common mistake again developers make 
if I don't do all promises dot uh, this one, I can actually do console dot log of all promises. If I just try to print that, even if I expect it is going to return me the value, it is not going to return me the value because it, it the promise dot all method itself returns a promise. So it returns a promise as you see, it does, doesn't return the value. On top of that, you have to handle this using the then method. And another alternative of handling, what is that? It will be using the async await, right? We can do the async await. So for doing async await, what do we have to do? We can write a function like that. The function can be an async function. And promise.all, instead of handling through the then method, we can actually do an await. You know that if it is an async call, we are handling promises, we can use the await keyword. And if you're using the await keyword, the surrounding function should have an async keyword. Then you will get the same output over here. And I'm calling this function in a later point of view. So after five seconds, it's going to print out the kind of similar thing. Now, if you are again new to async and await, I have a video. So please go ahead and take a look. So we are good with that, right? We are good with promise.all. Now, there are a few more points to uh, keep in mind regarding promise.all. And that is where, you know, we have all these methods, you know, for us to use but each of these methods are a little bit different and that difference that you have to make sure that you understand so one thing we understand is like promise.all returns a promise that we have to handle promise.all execution time depends on the promise which takes the maximum time to resolve but there is one more very very important point if any of the promises rejects right now the example that we had is all the promises resolve correctly but if any of the pro promises reject due to some error and all these things promise dot all rejects immediately the rest of the promises input promises will never exist if i reject this green so i say error so what will happen the promise dot all takes red green and blue so if i just execute this one red green and blue if you see is error out green it is not actually executing anything so if any of the input promises rejects or error out promise dot all rejects immediately it means that rest of the input promises will not execute we will be using a tool that i have developed to demonstrate some of these examples in a much much better way so let me introduce a tool called Promivis that I have developed and is open source that you can actually contribute to and learn from. I would really request you to contribute. So using Promivis, we are going to see how promise.all behaves. That's Promivis, my friend. So if you want to access Promivis, you can access it on promivis.virtual.app. Again, the link is in the description of this video. Please go ahead and access. What it does basically, you have three promises. You have this one, two, and three. So each of the promises, either you can actually play around with the time or you can you know, reject them. By default, they are, they are supposed to resolve. We have the methods over here. We have resolve all, any, rest, you know, all these methods are already here. So we can basically take advantage of this method and execute. So what I'm going to do first is like, so this one is take, this one takes one second, this one takes three seconds, this one takes five seconds. Okay, so I'm going to call promise.all on it. So start it at 10.30, 17 and by promise dot all what happened is the maximum time it takes it depends on the promise which took the maximum time to resolve so in this case it is blue which take five seconds so maximum time it is going to take the five seconds which is like started on 17 and it finished on 20 seconds so you know it works very well now what are we going to do we are going to reject one promise so i'm going to reject this green now i'll wait it will reject the green it started again at 43 and you saw that on 46, which is like three seconds since it started, it's rejected, you know, the all the promises. So promise.all, another thing that you know, if one input promises rejects, the promise.all is going to reject all. So you need to be careful about using promise.all. Okay, and the timing also you saw the be depending on like which particular promise got rejected because it first it will go this red then green then blue so based on which one getting rejected it's going to execute for that long and then it is going to reject everything now where do you want promise.all maybe promise.all what do we want like you are downloading you know some of the image files you're downloading a lot of image files and get all the image files when the overall operation is successful that is the when you will be downloading all the image files using promise.all promises uh, that could be one of the use case due to the nature of this that if one of the input promises rejects the entire promise.all gets rejected and error out the javascript included another great method all all settled so next what we are going to do we are going to see how all settled works now we we'll learn about the all settled method promise dot all settled method is comparatively a newest inclusion in promise apis uh, just like the all methods it takes the input array of all the promises and then executes them but there is a significant difference that is where you need to 
pay some attention. Promise.all method rejects all in case any of the input promises reject. But from unlike promise.all method, the all settled method doesn't reject if any of the input promises reject or it error out. It continues to execute all other promises that are there in the input array. Then return, you know, the result using the state value. If there is an error out, what is the reason for this error with everything. So I find all settled is much, much better and the flexible method to use over all. So I use all settled all the time. Now stopped using all. But it's good to know, like the legacy, it's good to know about dot all so that we'll appreciate all settled a lot. Okay. So this is a pro code that we had written last time for all. Now I'm just going to add all settled over here. That's it. So this is the previous output, which, which given me the red, green, blue values that you have seen over here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this one and see like what it returns. But look at the output. Output has a significant difference. So in this output, if I see, you know, all these console.log colors, um, if I just expand it. So if you see the first one is the status is saying fulfilled, the value is red. Second one status is saying fulfilled, value is green. Third one fulfilled and the value is so it is giving the status and the value. Now you may say like, okay, what is the use of this status? You know, the value is what I need. Now what I'm going to do, I am going to reject this green again. So instead of resolve, I am going to reject this green. It means that I'll be doing some kind of error out. And again, I am running the same code. Okay, I don't need this for loop. I'm just removing this. So let's wait for five seconds now. The five seconds has been elapsed. And what we are going to see if I just expand this, if do you see this now? The first one is fulfilled and red. The second one is says rejected. And the reason is whatever the reason that we have passed. And the third one is again fulfilled. So this is much more comprehensive because it is giving you the possible output for all this promise execution. Now it is up to you that's taking this output. What are you going to do? Think about it like you are downloading images from three different sources. And each of these promises actually help you to download from these different sources. With promise that all settled, you can actually point out from one source if there is an error out, but from two sources, other two sources, the images got downloaded successfully. You show those images, but for the third one, which the it got error out, you can show an error message. Basically, you got that error out. With promise dot all, you actually lose everything. You don't get anything if one of them is gone out. This is the biggest difference between all and all settled. Now let us see with Promivis how we can exercise the same thing. Here we have Promivis again. And this time what we're going to do, we are going to do all settled. So when I'm doing all settled, it's going to take again five seconds because this is going to take the maximum time blue. So started at four or zero nine. Now let me reject this guy. Last time we rejected this. And then what happened is like the entire all promise dot all rejected everything. So let's see what all settled does. I have rejected at 21. It started at 21. So what is saying that it started at 21 in on 26 is giving me an output saying that rejected the color green. Very good. But it's still finished settling you know, all other things like you settling the red and blue. So it didn't really error out over here and then it, it stopped executing the rest of it. And the total time it took again from 21 to 26. If you remember last time with dot all, the execution stopped in the three seconds itself because we had rejected this promise. Again, use a tool like Promivis where you can play around with different APIs for different input. And then you'll be feeling amazing that you understand each of this much, much, you know, better way. I hope you understand all settled. Next, we'll be learning about promise.any. All right, so time for learning the any method. Again, like promise.all and all settled, the any method also takes the collection of input promises like red, green, blue, whatever was there. So what I'm going to do instead of all settled, I am going to do over any, as simple as that. But let's understand the crux of it, what exactly any does. So any returns, again, a new promise, like the all and all settled, when any of the input promises fulfilled, okay? As the name signifies, any of the input promises fulfilled. Now in our case, red takes one second, you know, green, let's make it resolve again. For the last example, we had to make it uh, reject. So, and then we have blue. So this takes one second, this takes three seconds, this takes five seconds, good. Now, what do you think? The earliest promise, any of the promise, if it's going to resolve, it will be the red one, right? Because the red one in parallel when promises are running, red one is the fastest one. That's to get kind of resolve, which is good. So if I just save and run, within one second, I got red. Fantastic, it works very well. What if now red rejects? So if I just go ahead and reject this red, okay? I'll give a reason like error. Now what will happen? Any will 
continue to execute. So if red rejects, now the fastest one, the fastest one that it will get going to get is the green. So let's see the output. You see what happened? It gave me green. Okay. So any as the name uh, signifies, it is going to return a promise when any of the input promises are fulfilled. I will we will be now playing around with promises to see all the combinations possible. All right. Here we have promises again. And right now I am going to call out any. Of course, it started at 47. Red got picked up, the lucky one, because it is the fastest one. And the moment the red got resolved, as the promise.any method does, it means that this it will return a promise immediately because it will consider that any of the promises got resolved, as the name signifies. So it's finished its execution. Now, if I reject this guy, what will happen? It started at 09 again. What will happen at 12? So this is got rejected, but any won't stop. Any will keep executing. Now, what if I found as an any is a green? Great. Now the green one is done in three seconds. So at nine it started. At twelve it's got over. So twelve it got finished. If I reject this also, now it will start at again at twenty-eight. That means it's going to take now five seconds. So at thirty-three, yes, is going to give me the blue because now red got rejected, green got rejected. So out of the three, any is obviously the blue one that's you know left out. Now if I reject blue also, what happened? I rejected all three. This rejection happened at forty-seven. So again, it will try to find out, okay, red, no, this one, no, this one, no. So after five seconds elapsed, after trying all these promises, it didn't find any of them. So it reject using an error called aggregate error. It means that all promises were rejected. So this is how promise.any works. So again, if you use promise tool, you can in fact play around with this timing, play around with the resolve and reject, play around with this method and see like how exactly it behaves. But promise.any, again, method takes all the collection of input promises, returns a new promise only when any of the input promises fulfilled. If all the promises rejected, it returns an aggregate error. If any of the promises gets rejected, it still continues to find out any of the promises from the input promises. Okay, so that's how the promise.any works. Next, we are going to learn about another great method called promise.res. Let's learn about promise.res method. As the name suggests res, it means resing. So it actually creates a res among all the input promises and the fastest promise always wins. The promise.res method is almost like the promise.any method but with one significant difference. As the name suggests, the res method is also about doing the res among all the input promises and the fastest promise wins. So in our case, the fastest promise is red. Now if I execute this particular uh, you know, test function which is having promise.res taking all the input promises. Of course, the red one is going to win within one second and going to give the output. Fantastic. But what if I reject red? So let's see what happens. If I go ahead and reject red with a message call, say error red. What do you think will happen? In case of promise any, the, what it did actually, it picked up the next one because it has to pick any of the resolved promises unless otherwise all the input promises rejects. But in this case, the fastest one I have rejected. Now I'm going to save this. Did you see what happened? It found the first one got rejected and it just rejected everything. That is the significant difference between any and res. In case of any, if one of the input promise rejects, it continue to execute all other input promises. In case of res, the fastest one is always the winning one. If the, first, if the fastest one rejects, it rejects everything. Okay. So it means that uh, for promise.any, I am actually downloading images from the different sources and the images are of different resolution. I'm okay with any resolution that I get you know, and I'm going to use it. That's why promise.any use cases. I get a high resolution, mid resolution, smaller resolution, doesn't matter. If any of them I get, any of them I get fastest and I'm going to use it. That's my use case. But with res, I always want to get the one which I want to get fastest. Maybe the smallest resolution so that it comes fastest. So if I want to get the fastest one, then only I'll be using res. Otherwise, I want to kind of reject everything. In that circumstances, using res. In other circumstances, if you want only any of them, use any. So that's the fundamental difference between res and any. Hope it was useful. But we want to see it with promise again, isn't it? So here goes promise again. So I'm going to do promise.res is of course 46 and the 47 is going to do. Now, I don't want to reject red here. Let me reject maybe 
green does it matter he started on 56 again 57 because the race the fastest one wins so it found this one it won't even look into the rest of it okay but what if i reject this and i have rejected this it will reject immediately you saw on 7 it started 8 it got rejected if i don't even reject this again started on 15 on 16 again getting rejected because the first one the quickest one itself is rejecting so for race this is a significant difference over any that you have to keep in mind and in interview actually you get usually puzzled with situations like that you know interviewer give different kind of these situations for you to kind of play around and find out like what is going to happen once you use the tool like promivis in and out and try to experiment out practice things will be very much clear to you hope you understand next we are going to talk about promise.resolve and after that promise.reject so promise.resolve method is a simple one it's used to resolve a value as simple as that so in the beginning we have seen like how to create a promise using the promise constructor and then resolve it using the then or with async await similarly the promise.resolve is about resolving a promise that's it so here if you see the example i have this red promise and i'm calling promise.resolve what is going to do is going to resolve this promise and return is value which is nothing but the red if i run this one is going to return me red after one second that's all that's it about the promise.resolve nothing more than that this is not a very significantly used method over all other four methods that you've discussed so far but it's good to know that there is something called promise.resolve which makes it little bit easier for us to resolve a promise as promise.resolve gives us the resolved value promise.reject gives us the error or the reject reason so you can actually call promise.reject pass a promise and if the promise reject due to an error it will return that error along with the possible stack trace so that you can actually handle that at your end so i'm calling promise.reject it will return a promise i am resolving it using await again so this is the error that i'm going to get and i'm just printing this thing over here on the console so now what I'm going to do instead of red, I am going to pass green because green is the one which is like rejecting so that I can show this example. I'll save it. There is a rejection of green. So you can see this promise error green with the reason. So I can see this rejection and the stack trace as, as well. So this is how the promise dot rejects, you know, just like promise dot resolve is another handy method that you may want to use. So that's all about all the methods. I hope you found this video helpful. And if so, please like and share. Help me to reach out more people. Help out to reach out more developers. Help out this video to go to many other people so that they also get benefit out of it. That will be a great help. To understand and learn promises, the main thing is practices. Do practices. Lot, lot, lot of practices. I'm there to help. If you are stuck, I'm there on Twitter. I'm there on LinkedIn. You can just DM me. I'll be able to help you. So don't hesitate. Keep learning, make promises something which is very, very easy for you to deal with. Go through this entire series, the previous videos of the promises so that you master it. Go through them again, again and again and practice them.